Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by for another video. Today we're going to be comparing the original M1 MacBook Pro to the new 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. We're gonna run benchmark tests, we're gonna do video export tests, we're gonna do general overview of the differences between them, we're gonna run tests in Pro Tools. These original M1 machines were such wildly popular and capable machines, I think a lot of people bought these. But is it a big enough jump to be worth upgrading to the new 14 inch M2 Max? Today we're gonna to answer just that question. Now I think one of the most interesting things about this is how close these are in physical size. Not only are they extremely close in physical size, but the 14 inch MacBook Pro has a much bigger screen thanks to its much thinner bezels. So you kind of get the best of all the worlds in the 14 inch. In my opinion, this is the perfect size laptop. The 13 inch, the screen on the 13 inch is just a, a little bit small for me. The 16 inch is a little too big and a little too heavy. The 14 inch seems to be like the perfect sweet spot. Largest screen you can possibly fit in this, in this form factor while not being hardly any bigger than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Let's get a hot take in right out of the gate. I actually loved the touch bar. I know I'm in the minority here, but I loved the touch bar on the original M1 MacBook Pro. Its suggestions when typing were wonderful to me. Its shortcuts in all kinds of different apps, Final Cut and Lightroom. I personally think it was really, really cool. Now I understand people want actual physical function buttons, but that's never really been important to me. Love the touch bar and I'm, I'm a little sad to see it go. Now before we get into the performance differences of these, the IO is gonna be one of the biggest differences because the original 13 inch MacBook Pro only had two Thunderbolt ports and one of them had to be used to charge the dang thing. While this was incredibly powerful at the time it's released, I'm not convinced this should have been called a MacBook Pro because of its super limited IO. Now moving over to the new 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is in the same body as the M1 14 inch MacBook Pro. But on the right hand side, you've got a full size HDMI port, a Thunderbolt port and an SD card reader. And on the left hand side, you have the MagSafe charging port, which I love MagSafe. That never should have went away in my opinion. You've also got two more Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack. In my opinion, this is the minimum amount of IO that you need in order to qualify as an actual pro machine. So I'm happy to see that we got lots of ports back and you can charge separately without taking up one of your Thunderbolt ports. That's all great. Now when it comes to the processors in these, the M1 MacBook Pro simply had an eight core CPU with an eight core GPU, 16 core neural engine. Now at the time I got this maxed out with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. You only had the options between eight gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigs of RAM. So I went with 16 on this one. The M2 Max chip has a 12 core CPU with eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores. It has a 30 core GPU. That's <laughs> so much more powerful. And it has a 16 core neural engine. The 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Max, this one has a 32 gigabyte RAM in it. You can max it out at 96 gigabytes of RAM, which is crazy. Now battery power is where the old one actually wins because it was so much less powerful. It was so much less power hungry. You could watch video playback for a quoted 20 hours of battery life on this small compact laptop. The 14 inch M2 Max, 18 hours of video playback. So we're actually losing a couple hours, probably because this processor is so much more powerful and it is more power hungry, but the form factor of the laptop is not really any bigger. So the M1 MacBook Pro has a 58.2 watt hour lithium battery in it. And the M2 Max 14 inch has a 70 watt hour lithium battery in it. So not that much bigger of a battery, but a significantly bigger, more powerful processor. Processor. The M1 MacBook Pro, you could only get with an up to two terabyte hard drive. The M2 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro, you can get up to an eight terabyte hard drive. And I also have to say that the display on the new 14 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro is, is amazing. It's a really, really amazing display. The 14 inch MacBook Pro has a 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display and it is beautiful. The M1 MacBook Pro had a 13.3 inch 
LED backlit display. Its resolution, its colors, its vividness, it's just, it's definitely a better display. So my experience between these two, before we get into actually testing them against each other, editing video on this is just a lot more seamless. Much less frames dropped, much less lagginess, everything is just snappier and faster. You can definitely feel the difference just zipping around, even on a web browser or opening and closing applications. You can definitely feel how much snappier this is than the original M1 MacBook Pro. But let's get into the performance difference between these two computers. So we're running the benchmark on the M1. Uh, I have both of these plugged in during all of these tests, so there's no throttling based on battery life or anything else. During all of these tests, both of them were plugged in. Okay, so the benchmark performance of the original M1 MacBook Pro, it got a single core score of 1748, and it got a multi-core score of 7592. The 14-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro got a single core score of 1967 and a multi-core score of 15327. That multi-core score is double for the M2 Max chip as it is for the original M1 chip. D double. Benchmarks are all fine and dandy, but what does this mean in real world test results? So I loaded up a video clip into Final Cut Pro. This was exactly a 10 minute video clip. It was from my Sony a7 IV shot in S-Log. It's 4K, 24 frames per second, 10 bit, 422 footage. And the M1 MacBook Pro exported this footage in 10 minutes and 59 seconds. Now I thought this was a little long, uh, like really long. I've used a, this computer for a lot of video work before and that felt long to me. So I ran it another pass and the second export was 10 minutes, 58 seconds. So exactly the same. It was plugged in, no other programs were running at the time. The, I'm not sure if this thing is slowing down or maybe if the newest version of Final Cut is a little bit more CPU intensive. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that felt really slow on this. Meanwhile, the M2 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro rendered that same clip out in a whopping two minutes, 40 seconds. So we're talking nearly four times faster export speed on the M2 Max versus the original M1. Four times faster, that's wild. So in another test that I did, I loaded Pro Tools up on both of these computers. I created 120 stereo channels, and on each channel I had two EQs, two compressors, two versions of lo-fi, two delays, and two reverb plugins on, on each of the 120 channels. That's 240 instances of reverb. This is a completely unrealistic test in an effort to just max these out and see what they're actually capable of. You would never mix a song with 240 instances of reverb, which is one of the most uh, CPU intensive plugins that you can use in a, in a DAW. So the M1 MacBook Pro showed a CPU usage of about 69% with a leftover 28% sitting idle. That's still really impressive that this original M1 MacBook Pro will run a session like that and still have power left over. However, when I loaded that same session up on the M2 Max MacBook Pro, it was only using 29% CPU and hovering about 67% leftover CPU sitting idle. So when it comes to audio, it's more than twice as powerful as the original M1 chips. Now this would go for the original M1 Mac Minis as well, anything with that original M1 chip in it. So is it a worthwhile upgrade over the original M1? I would say absolutely. Now be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna run another set of comparison tests of this against the M1 Mac Max chips, and that might be a different story, but if you're running one of the original M1 machines, the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, the original MacBook Pros, this is really an upgrade in power compared to those machines. I can't wait to see how this compares to the M1 Max and see if it's worth the upgrade there as well. Thank you guys for watching. Drop a comment, let me know your thoughts. Are you going to be picking up one of these computers? Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for future videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.